by order of the Overseer Council. The following file is level 5 slash 6134 classified. Unauthorized access is forbidden. Automatic identity verification complete. Hail the Lamb, upon the outer walls of heaven, his corpse blooms with eternal life. Welcome, 05-4. Item number, SCP-6134. Object class, Thaumiel Provisi. Level 5 slash 6134 classified. Special containment procedures, objects SCP-6134-A and SCP-6134-B1 through 58 remain at the bottom of the Baltic Sea approximately 30 nautical miles south of Gavel, Sweden. They are entirely non-anomalous and require no observation. Object SCP-6134-B59 is currently housed in Site-35 Laboratory B3-13, which has been stripped of its EVE measuring apparatus and retrofitted with a high-capacity drainage retention system. Under no circumstances should the HRV-400 steel bar embedded in its torso be in any way damaged or removed. Description SCP-6134 is the collective designation issued to a selection of interrelated anomalous objects partially neutralized on May 12, 2002, as well as the relationship between them. This refers specifically to the the refrigerated cargo freighter MV Daisy, a collection of 59 preserved human corpses, and an unspecified quantity of liquid chemically consistent with seawater. These are designated as follows. SCP-6134-A, refrigerated freighter ship MV Daisy, constructed in 1972. Captained by Type Green Reality Bender Maximilian Heller for its full duration as a seafaring vessel. Neutralized. SCP-6134-B1-58, the remains of the SCP-6134 a crew, preserved in stasis of an anomalous nature. Suspended life activity ceased May 12, 2002. Neutralized. SCP-6134-B59, the remains of SCP-6134 a first mate Alexander Fokavish, preserved in stasis of an anomalous nature. AHRV-400 grade steel bar is embedded in the object's torso with an entry point between the third and fourth left rib, partially diminishing the flow of SCP-6134 CB-59 emits a stable resting LA vital energy field of approximately 13,000 caspers. SCP-6134 C, barring its anomalous properties, SCP-6134 C is chemically consistent with naturally occurring salt water, specifically uncontaminated Baltic sea water. Undiluted, the liquid incites rapid growth in all biological organisms to come in direct contact with it, reversing cell decay and causing multiplication superficially resembling cancerous tumors. Ingested or absorbed in quantities below 0.5 milliliters per approximately 100 kg body mass per month, SCP-6134-C has so far proven to mitigate the natural symptoms of aging and promote increased physical health across all tests, including those utilizing human volunteers. The liquid has been flowing from the puncture in Object B-59's chest cavity at a constant rate of approximately 1 L per hour since its recovery, necessitating the installation of an additional retention system to prevent contamination of Site-35 drainage systems and water supply. A pre-biopsy attempt at removing the rebar partially restricting the flow of SCP-6134-C resulted in a temporary increase in stream to approximately 6 L per minute. As the total volume of C is impossible to determine and obviously far greater than the total physical capacity of B-59, further attempts are not to be made at risk of flooding. Research personnel are to avoid coming in direct contact with SCP-6134-C. Discovery, SCP-6134 was originally brought to Foundation attention upon interception of Swedish civilian Coast Guard radio reports of a seafaring vessel registered to known type Green Reality Bender and Person of Interest No. 6134, Maximilian Heller on May 12, 2002. As the ship, its cargo, and its crew had been reported lost at sea approximately six months prior, a Foundation Emergency Interception Team was scrambled to its location. Addendum 6134-1, Incident Report May 12, 2002 
Assigned Site, Site 35 Baltic Chapter Site Director, Dr. Robert Wells Research Head, Dr. Julian Bergstrom Assigned MTF, OTFSE Beta 48, Edgner, STFSE Alpha 03, Glacis Velier Forward, in order to contain SCP-6134, an emergency interception team was deployed, consisting of members of Swedish Oceanic Task Force Beta 48, Edgner, divided into two strike teams designated STASK and STM Blatt, headed by operatives Inars Dottir and Falk respectively. The former was also accompanied by Swedish Special Task Force Alpha 03, Glacis Velier, Type Green Reality Bender Operative Hawkinson and his handler, Operative Olsen. Prior to deployment, Operative Hawkinson's subdermal pharmaceutical thomic field limiter pump was temporarily disabled. Incident Log Chronology Report May 12, 2002 8.27 AM, Emergency Interception Team Deployed from Gavel Foundation Port 8.36 AM, 2 nanometers to approach Video transmission equipment begins to experience minor interference. Audio transmission remains unaffected. 8.42 AM, 0.25 nanometers to approach. Contact lost with all video transmission equipment barring operative Hawkinson's body camera, which experiences significant interference. Audio transmission equipment experiences severe static interference. 8.52 AM, STASK and STM BLA successfully board SCP-6134A, encountering no resistance. Surface deck appears deserted. 8.53 to 9.25 AM, STASK performs a sweep of the upper decks of SCP-6134A and issues an all-clear. STM BLA performs a sweep of the lower decks and hold. 9.35 AM, STM BLA successfully disables and opens the automatic doors to the refrigerated cargo hold and performs a sweep of the interior. SCP-6134 B1-59 through 59 found. STM BLA relays the discovery to STASK. 9.53 AM, operatives in Arsdottir, Carlson, Hawkinson, and Olsen enter the bridge, encountering POI-6134 Maximilian Heller. 10.08 AM, Operative Olsen fires five shots from his service sidearm, killing Hawkinson and Heller and triggering the loss of SCP-6134-A's and SCP-6134-B1 through 58's anomalous properties. 10.12 AM, SCP-6134-A deteriorates, requiring STASK and STM BLA to evacuate. OTFSE Beta 48, Edgner, sustains one casualty and several injuries. Afterward, due to the strength of the E field emitted by SCP-6134 prior to the death of POI-6134, the majority of audiovisual material recorded during the interception remains unusable, with the exception of approximately an hour and 15 minutes of footage transmitted by the body camera of Operative Hawkinson, whose own latent EVE emission was sufficient to partially counter that of the environment. This footage covers minutes 0 to 75 of the operation, from boarding up until the operative's death. An excerpt of the transcript is available below. Begin transcript. Feed cuts in. The sparsely furnished interior of the SCP-6134 a bridge is visible, frame partially blocked by operative Carlson. POI-6134, Maximilian Heller sits in a desk chair at the far end of the room. He is holding a glass. Heller and here I was starting to think no one was going to show. Operative Inars Dottir makes a cautionary gesture. She steps forward. Inars Dottir, person of interest designation 6134, Maximilian Heller. We are. Heller, I know who you are, Foundation. I was hoping you would leave me alone. Inars Dottir, you are breaching bail protocol. You're personally registered type green in our database, you should know that. You're also registered dead, which I think is cause for some concern. Heller, I haven't hurt anyone. In ours. Here, your fucking cargo hold is full of frozen corpses, Heller. Heller, ah. Uh. Yes. 
I see you've met my crew. In Ars.ir, you're, what the hell have you done to them? Operative in Ars.ir attempts to approach Poi 6134, but is restrained by Operative Olsen. Heller, I did what I could. A captain does not abandon his crew. In Ars.ir, cut the crap. What's going on here? You murder your men and make off with the ship, is that it? POI 6134 takes a drink from the glass in front of him. Static briefly distorts the camera view. Heller, I'm not interested in explaining myself to you, agent. I know who you are, and if you're here, my reason for becoming a problem isn't going to matter. I'm not going back with you to a padded cell, so if you're going to kill me I'd rather we get it over with now. Operative in Ars.ir gives an emergency hand signal to her team. Out of frame, Operative Olsen can be heard releasing the safety of his sidearm. For what it's worth, I tried to save them. I really did. You can understand that, can't you? I have a man in that hold, agent, with a steel beam through his ribcage. There is nothing left of his heart, his lungs, nothing in that perfect chest but the sharp end of a hundred pounds of metal. But as long as I am here as long as my boots touch this deck he does not die. Hawkinson, is he, does, are they suffering? Operative Olsen turns to shake his head reprovingly. Operative Hawkinson does not acknowledge the gesture. Heller, suspended in empty, dreamless sleep. A lack of pain was the best I could give any of them. It was the best I could do. Can you help them? Can you save him? Pause. If not, I suggest that you leave. Inars.ir takes a step forward, the movement appearing to suddenly require a significant amount of effort. Inars.ir, we can't do that. If you come peacefully, you won't be harmed. The foundation isn't cruel. Heller, isn't it? And you bring this man with you for what, to show me what you do to my kind? Drugged with the same you use to fell gods, cut off from the lifeblood of the earth? I'm fine where I am. In Ars.ir, Hawkinson, don't listen to him. Heller, this is your last chance to do this peacefully. Static obscures the camera view. Hawkinson, what the fuck did I just say? Heller, I've always considered the term reality bender a bit of a misnomer, but then again, that's your words, not mine. See, you're not forcing anything to happen. You're just helping the world grow in the right direction. It's a gift that was never meant for what I've been doing, agent. Do you know how heavy a ship like this is? It takes a lot of energy to hold it above water. To keep it still in time, caught at the crest of a final wave. Do you know what happens when I let go? Static continues to obscure the camera. The sound of shifting furniture and several loud thuds can be heard. Olsen, ow, oh, fuck, what? Heller, this ship did sink, you know. I couldn't stop that, not one man against an ocean. But I saved who I could. Don't make me waste that. In Ars.ir, what do you expect us to do? The men down there are corpses. I don't know why you've bothered all this time, and for what, an accident? You survived. No one's healing smashed skulls and torsos sliced in half. Just leave this, we can find you a job. You can't be sailing a ghost ship through civilian waters, Heller. You know there's a protocol. Heller, they're my friends. People I, people I should have protected. They don't deserve to die. I'm not leaving them. In Ars.ir, now audible from a notably further distance, attempts to activate her radio. In Ars.ir, STM Black, do you, fuck. God damn it. Hawkinson, can you stabilize this room? The gravity is, I can't reach the floor. Hawkinson. The static obscuring the camera clears partially. The gravity in the bridge appears to have reversed its direction, pinning operatives in Ars.ir, Carlson, and Olsen to the ceiling. POI 6134 appears to be unaffected, 
as well as Operative Hawkinson's point of view. POI 6134 rises from his seat, allowing the chair to fall upwards, colliding heavily with the ceiling. He approaches Operative Hawkinson, who does not appear to react. Heller, you should get out of here, kid. As far as you can. It's a big world. Plenty of space. Hawkinson, I, I like my job. I'm sorry. I'm still the suppressants are still wearing off. I'm sorry. Heller, I can feel you here, you know. Opening back up. The ocean below us and the life below that, the deep below the deep and over our heads it's limitless, if you let it be. You don't want to lose that, do you? Go back to a shitty apartment, spend the rest of your life working for people who decided you're so dangerous you need to be drugged, never feeling the world beyond the shape of your own skin. The camera moves rapidly as the ship lurches sideways. The sound of tearing metal can be heard outside the bridge. Heller, last chance, kid. I can only keep us still for so long. My place is here, but... Pause. We would have liked each other, I think. But you still have time for a better life than this. Go. The gravity in the room reverses again, dropping the remaining foundation operatives to the floor. Hawkinson, I... Operative Olsen reorients himself and reaches for his sidearm, which has fallen to the floor beside him. Olsen, we can't risk this boss, your call? In ours. Here, take the shot. Gunfire. Feed cuts. And transcript. Addendum 613042, Personnel Psych Interview May 27, 2002 Excerpt. Forward, Post-Action Psychological Fitness Personnel Interview of Operative Eric Olson, Conducted by Site 35 Baltic Chapter Resident Psychologist Dr. Amanda Kaminska. Relevant excerpts follow. Olson, document good to see you. Kaminska, please, have a seat. You know why you're here, yes. Olson, yeah. Look, I, I've already talked to our site ethcom jury about the whole. The incident. Exonerated. We don't have to do this. Kaminska, mandatory sessions, Olson. Please, I really insist you have a seat. Olson, yeah, all right. Fine. Kaminska, what's on your mind today? Olson, I. Nothing, I guess. Look, Hawkinson was always a little weird. Resentful type. It would have happened sooner or later, whenever the next time they took him off the suppressants came around. I may have called it a little early but look, we couldn't risk having two rogue greens. Not ones like that, for sure. This shouldn't be happening to me. Kaminska, would you like to elaborate on that? Olsen, look, the guy was kind of a freak, okay. Max LR radiation acceptable by foundation standards is, what? Just chai of 500 Caspers? Something like that. Anyone over that gets put on thomic suppressants. Not much of a problem if you're popping a pill a day to get yourself down to the limit, but he packed a resting field of 6000 C's, and that means you're on constant. Subdermal pump, 24-7. What I'm saying is it made him weird. Always kind of out of it. I don't know what Heller told him they were frozen back there for a while, probably some fucking telepathy or something. I don't know. Whatever it was, it was clearly better than his life here. I think he resented it. Working here, I mean. Kaminska, I know how thomic suppressants work, Eric. I meant how you feel about the situation. Olsen, oh. Look. Can we talk about something else? Kaminska, all right. How have you been sleeping? Olsen, oh, come on. Look, it's I'm still having the dreams. Caught underwater, that fucking ship folding around me like a crumpling can. I wake up tasting salt. Kaminska, my understanding is you managed to remain above water during the collapse? Olsen, 
the whole thing flooded as soon as the top deck collapsed, but yeah, I kept my head up. That's beside the point, though. They're they're not my dreams, not my memories. Everyone who was on that ship gets them. We've talked. I don't know if they were hellers, or the bodies down there in the hold, but look, I see the storm every fucking time I close my eyes. Always that same damn wave, pulling me under, crushing the lungs right out of my chest. If that's what those poor fuckers had been feeling for all that time, I'm glad they're dead. I haven't slept in, what, three days. Four. I'm scared to try. Kaminska, well, you look quite well for someone who isn't getting any sleep. Olsen, I do, don't I? I've been thinking about that too. Are we done? End log. Addendum 61343, SCP 6134B59 Biopsy Transcript. Assigned Site, Site 35 Proper. Site Director, Dr. Robert Wells. Research Head, Dr. Julian Bergstrom, Agent Paul McIntyre Assisting. Assigned MTF, Not Applicable. Forward, during post-incident investigation of the site of SCP-6134-A sinking, SCP-6134-B-59 was recovered. The object was immediately notable for its lack of decomposition compared to the remainder of the B specimens, as well as the fact that it rested on the seafloor undamaged and unobscured by wreckage. The object was transported to Site 35 proper from the Baltic chapter, and a preliminary examination was performed by Dr. Julian Bergstrom. Partial transcript follows. Recording start. Bergstrom, mind if I keep recording? McIntyre, yeah, of course. This is off the record, right? Bergstrom, unless we find something particularly notable, yes. I like to keep a recorder going for my own notes. Beat stopping to write everything down by a mile. McIntyre, smart. So, uh, where are we with the autopsy? Bergstrom, well, to begin with, I would say autopsy might be a bit of a misleading term here. Take a look at the chart over there. McIntyre, this one? Bergstrom, that's right, with the printout. See the brain activity scan? So, the interesting thing our friend here isn't really displaying any activity, strictly speaking, it's more of, hmm, how to put this? Paused at the crest of a wave, so to speak. As if someone caught him mid-thought. If you take a look over there, it's the same with his vitals. McIntyre, like he's frozen in time. That's interesting, I guess. Huh. This is his pulse over here? Bergstrom, the monitor? Oh, no, that's mind your step that's the water dripping into that basin you almost tripped over. Constant pump, it does look a little like a heartbeat when you measure it. McIntyre, it's just water? Bergstrom, at a glance, yeah. Salt water. Baltic, presumably. McIntyre, how long has it been going? Bergstrom, let me check my watch. That'll be, ah, uh, six hours since arrival here, plus however many since they pulled him up out of the Baltic. About a liter every hour I've been watching it, without much sign of stopping. McIntyre, is that a lot? Bergstrom, well, it's certainly more water than he should have inside him, especially if you consider how much came out when I tried to pull that bar out of his chest. McIntyre, hmm. Bergstrom, you seem disappointed. McIntyre, ha. Huh. Maybe a little. You know me, doctor, I like a bit of excitement. I was expecting our zombie seaman here to be a little more, entertaining, I suppose. Bergstrom, well, I'm afraid you'll have to make do with just a small miracle for now, agent. Though if I may make a personal observation. McIntyre, yeah, of course. Bergstrom, I think someone loved this man quite a bit, you know. I suppose you could say that little ocean inside him is a bit of the world's lifeblood, isn't it? 
if you wanted to get philosophical about it, I mean. It didn't make much of a difference in the end. McIntyre, I suppose it didn't. Pause. Bergstrom, anyhow, if you'd like to help me take these samples down the hall, I think we can wrap up for tonight. Just let me get the cap and gloves off. McIntyre, sure thing. Oh, wow, new look. Bergstrom, what do you mean? McIntyre, the hair. Suits you. I've thought about dyeing mine too, but the wife says she likes the gray. Maybe I'll convince her. Bergstrom, ha, I, ah, I have no clue what you mean. I'm flattered, but I haven't dyed anything since I was a teen. McIntyre, what? Don't tell me I'd imagined you'd gone silver, that would be embarrassing. Bergstrom, Paul, I've been gray for years. McIntyre, wait, what? I think you, uh, I think you should look in a mirror. Let me. End log. Addendum 613444, Internal Overseer Council Vote 08-24-02-0034A. As a vote number 08-24-02-0034A, 50 milliliters of a 1 colon 100 water diluted solution of SCP-6134-C is available once per month to all members of the Overseer Council upon filing a written request for peer approval. 05-1, yay. 05-2, nay. 05-4, abstain. 05-3, yay. 05-12, nay. 05-5, yay. 05-6, yay. 05-7, yay. 05-8, yay. 05-9, yay. 05-10, yay. 05-11, yay. 05-13, yay. SCP-6134-C is available to council members exclusively, and may not be distributed to employees, friends, or family members. Use it wisely.